So it would be nice if we could make this problem of calculating determinants a little bit easier. And uh, there are some tricks we can implement to do this. Um, the first thing that I want to introduce are, are a few pieces of terminology. Um, the minors and cofactors of a matrix are defined as follows. The ij minor of a matrix is denoted by m sub ij. And this is the determinant of the ij submatrix. The ij cofactor is denoted by c sub ij. And this is negative 1 to the i plus j multiplied by the determinant of the ij submatrix. Um, so here is a perfectly good 3 by 3 matrix. If I wanted to calculate its 2, 3 minor, I would delete the second row and the third column, and I'd take a determinant of whatever's left over. Here I, it would be 12 minus negative 10, which is 22. What about the 2, 3 cofactor? Well, for the 2, 3 cofactor, I need the, the scalar negative 1 to the 2 plus 3. That's equal to negative 1 to the 5, which is negative 1. And then I multiply by the determinant of the 2, 3 submatrix, which here is 22 again. Um, so now the 2, 3 cofactor is negative 22. Uh, one reason that we care about cofactors is that cofactors allow us to sort of clean up the determinant formula. Remember, there is this negative 1 to the 1 plus k in the determinant formula. Well, um, that gets absorbed into the cofactor notation. So we can more easily maybe remember the formula for determinants as the sum from k equals 1 to n of the k1 entry of the matrix multiplied by the k1 cofactor. Um, now, cofactors are extremely useful. So uh, we use cofactors a lot when we study determinants. And so it's useful to remember how the signs, negative 1 to the i plus j, are organized. And so the way I remember this is um, the signs are sort of fit this uh, uh, grid pattern um, alternating between plus and minus. So if you go to a particular entry here, let's say this plus sign, this plus sign occurs in the 2, 4 entry of the matrix. What that's reminding me of is that negative 1 to the 2 plus 4 is negative 1 to the 6, which is plus 1. Um, over here, I have this uh, minus sign. This minus sign is in the uh, 4, 1 entry. Well, negative 1 to the 4 plus 1 is negative 1 to the 5, which is negative 1. Um, so uh, this pattern follows from the general principle, which says that negative 1 to an even number is plus 1, and negative 1 to an odd number is minus 1. Um, so uh, why, why are cofactors so useful? Well, other than just cleaning up the determinant formula, it turns out that the combinatorics uh, that one studies when one looks at these formulas um, inspires one to realize that this rule we're using where we drop down the first column, plucking out entries, and then multiplying by cofactors can actually be done with any row or any column, not just the first column. So this is what we call the expansion theorem. You can choose any row or any column to expand your determinant calculation about. So the i row expansion says choose row i, and then you can calculate the determinant by plucking out the entries in row i, and then multiplying, by, multiplying those entries by the corresponding cofactor. Uh, the jth column expansion says the same thing except with columns. Choose your favorite column pluck those entries out and multiply each one by the corresponding cofactor and then add everything up to get your determinant. So this theorem sort of says that we have some flexibility when we want to calculate our determinants. So uh, sometimes this makes calculations easier. So uh, here, let's just look at an example of applying this principle. Here I'm trying to calculate a, uh, a three by three determinant. Um, I could use a second row expansion. So uh, the, the entries in row 2 here are 7, 0, and negative 66. So I can pluck those entries out. And remember, I need to follow the cofactor sign convention when weighing these uh, entries. So uh, I, I always start in the upper left-hand corner and remind myself that's weighed with a plus 1. And then when I get to the 7, that's weighed with a minus 1. So I have a negative 7 here, and then the signs alternate. This would be plus the next entry, which is plus zero, which I'm including here for completeness sake. And then we'll get minus negative 66. 
So that's how we pluck the scalars out and weigh them appropriately. And then we want to multiply each one of those scalars by the corresponding determinant of the submatrix. Now, uh, this number seven was in the two one position. So we delete row two column one and take a determinant of whatever's left over. The zero was in the two two position. So we delete row two column two and take a determinant of whatever's left over. And the negative 66 was in the two three position. Here we delete row two column three and take a, de a determinant of whatever's left over. Great. <clears throat> So that's a row two expansion. We could take the same determinant by using a third column expansion. So the third column here consists of the numbers negative 15, negative 66, negative four. So to do a third column expansion, we pluck those numbers out and then weigh them by plus or minus one appropriately. Uh, if we start in the upper left-hand corner, we go plus minus plus. So we'll be scaling negative 15 by plus one, negative 66 by minus one, and then uh, negative four by plus one. Again, we delete the appropriate rows and columns in each term and take a determinant of whatever's left over. And uh, then we add everything up to get our determinant. So this example is illustrating that we have flexibility to choose how we expand our determinant. Um, and, and again, th this always gives the same answer. So it doesn't matter if we choose a second row expansion or a third column expansion, we'll get the same number when we take our determinant. Um, and sort of what's the, what's the big deal here? Well, this flexibility can prove useful. If the matrix has lots of zeros in it, well, why not choose a particular row or column where we have lots of zeros? So normally, if someone asks me to calculate a four by four determinant by hand, I find that quite annoying. But for this particular four by four determinant, it's actually not so bad. If we, we see here that column three has three zeros in it. So if I'm going to calculate this determinant, I'm going to choose a column three expansion because this column three expansion will only have one term in it. Whereas a, a different row or column might have lots more terms in it. So in this column three expansion, I'm only going to have one term and that term uh, will, be, uh, will have negative two in it. And how do we weigh negative two? Well, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, we're going to weigh negative two by plus one. So we'll get uh, uh, plus uh, uh, one times negative two. Then we delete that row in that column and take a determinant of whatever's left over. Well, um, whatever's left over now is its own three by three matrix. Well, how am I going to take a determinant of this three by three matrix? Uh, I don't know about you, but I would like to take advantage of these two zeros in column three. So I'm going to use a column three expansion for this determinant. And uh, so I'm only going to have one term and it's going to be scaled by seven. And uh, seven should be weighed, let's see here, plus minus plus by plus one. So now we'll get a seven popping out in addition to the negative two that carried over from the previous calculation. And now I delete row one, column three and take a determinant of whatever's left over here. And uh, of course, uh, this is now a two by two, which I can do by hand. Uh, this is three times four, which is 12 minus six, which equals six. So my determinant now is negative two times seven times six. Uh, this multiplies out to equal negative 84. So we just calculated a four by four determinant by hand using our expansion theorem. If we tried to do this from scratch with, uh, uh, like without paying attention to where the zeros are, this would be a pretty uh, difficult calculation. But here, we were lucky enough to have zeros in the first place. And then once we realized we had zeros, we took advantage of that by using uh, uh, our expansion theorem.